right, uh, next up, he requires no introduction. He requires no first name, Cheslock. <laughs> All right, let's do this. All right, everyone, my name is Pete Sheslock. This is 17th century shipbuilding in your so uh, failed software project. Also, why your project management sucks. Any uh, Swedes in the audience? Uh, anyone here of the ship called the Vasa? All right, well, you already know this story, so you be quiet. <laughs> this is the Vasa. It was one of the grandest ships ever built by the Royal Swedish Navy. It was completed summer of 1628, and it was the most expensive project under, ever undertaken for Sweden, about 5% of their GDP. That's about $28 billion. August 1628, the ship set sail. After sailing less than one mile, a light gust of wind caused the Vasa to heel over to its side. Water poured in and the ship sank. There's many lessons that we can learn from this failure that relate to software engineering. So of course there was an inquest and the captain was interrogated. He swore the guns had been properly secured and that the crew was sober, as most had came from religious services and that's how they realized they were sober. After the investigation, no one was punished or found guilty and it was classified an act of God. So the fundamental reason why the ship sank is that it was unstable. This is actually a cross section of the Vasa here. Uh, you can see a very small amount of ballast at the bottom. That's the rocks there. Um, there's a lot of reasons why it launched and the differences vary, we're gonna talk about it, but it basically relates to your failed software project. So the king asked for uh, three and a half years earlier, the king asked for four ships. He wanted two 108 foot ships and two 135 foot ships. Of course the Navy lost 10 ships in a battle, so the king said, I want the two smaller ships ASAP, right now. Scope change, a couple of months later, the king actually wanted a 120 foot ship instead, but they only had wood for an 111 foot ship uh, he wanted it to add more cannons, of course. So they just started building a 111-foot ship instead. So King learned that Denmark had two gun decks on their ship. So you know what he wanted to have? He wanted Docker, I mean, two gun decks. <laughs> and instead of starting over, he just scaled it up. It's worth noting when the King changed the plan, no one in Sweden, including the shipwrights, ever built a ship with two gun decks. So when it came to guns, there was a ton of revisions, sizes, numbers. There was a rush job on the guns and they were of such poor quality if analyzed later, they would have likely failed anyway. So if it hadn't capsized, it would have blown up. <laughs> so the king also wanted the ship to be outfitted with a ton of ornate gilded and painted carvings. Uh, the Vasa was meant to impress and outdo. Of course, uh, it contributed to the high center of gravity, uh, which was the fundamental reason why this ship sank. So measurements taken uh, about the Vasa, it was so unstable it would have keeled over at a list of just 10 degrees. Remember, this is a sailboat. It was an eight knot gust of wind that caused the ship to capsize. And the recent calculations of the ship say it would have keeled over in a breeze of just half that. They actually found rulers on site and they found something interesting. An Amsterdam foot is 11 inches to a foot. A Swedish foot is 12 inches to a foot. One side of the ship was built by people from Amsterdam. One side of the ship was built by people from Sweden. The shipwright became ill and died as a part of this project. Of course, all the designs for this ship were in the shipwright's head. Documentation, I guess. So of course, the general management of this project completely fell apart. So the admiral and the captain decided we should do a stability test. It's actually called a lurch test. You take 30 people and you run them back and forth from side to side. They had to stop this test after three rounds because the ship was about to heel over. Normally you'd add ballast, right? There was no more room. Even if there was room to add ballast, the ship lower gun portals would have been below water. <laughs> so why would you launch after the test failed? <laughs> it was later found the shipbuilders were not even present at the stability test and were never told about it. <laughs> so the king ordered the ship set sail by July 25th, and if it was not ready by then, quote, those responsible would be subject to his majesty's disgrace. Uh, the maiden boy of the Vasa was already two weeks later than originally planned. So close. So what can we learn from the Vasa? The Vasa launched under st strong time constraints to meet a pressing need. Many changes to the operational characteristics were made during construction. The specifications were not revised during the construction of the Vasa. There was poor transition to leadership when the shipwright died. No one in Sweden, including the shipwright, ever built a ship with two gun decks. Many secondary innovations, uh, innovations were added during the construction. And no one was aware how much the Vasa had actually evolved over the years. There were no known methods for calculating center of gravity or stability. It was launched after a failed test. And the result of the test was known and never actually communicated to anyone else. 
So the ultimate thing I want to get at here is those that don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it. So don't let your next project become the Vasa. If you go to the Vasa website, that's their 404 page. <laughs> it's the greatest thing ever. Thank you very much. All right. The man, the myth, the legend, Cheslock. Although I think you've sold out. There's no pooping unicorns this time.